Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to cover a 30 caliber magnum that is almost forgotten and a bit underrated. In today's video, we are going to do a deep dive into the 30 nozzler. In my last video, I had a discussion on cartridges that perform similar and do just as well as the new PRC cartridges. And when I got to the 300 PRC, I initially thought, oh yeah, you know, a 300 Win Mag is extremely similar, and the 300 Weatherby is a little bit faster. And honestly, I accidentally forgot about the 30 Nosler. So when I say it's kind of a almost a forgotten 30 caliber Magnum, well, I'm kind of talking about me. So what exactly is the 30 Nosler? Well, I kind of think of it as the modernized 300 Weatherby. In front of me is a 300 Weatherby, and a 30 Nosler has just about the same performance in a shorter, fatter case. In fact, I think it might be best described as if 300 Weatherby and 300 PRC had a baby, it would be the 30 Nosler. 30 Nosler sits right in between them. It has a modern case like the 300 PRC, but a little bit more capacity than a 300 PRC. So if you're looking for a 300 Weatherby type performer without a belt, the 30 Nosler might be your perfect cartridge. In 2016, Nosler introduced their 30 caliber version, the 30 Nosler. And what it is, the parent case is really the 300 Remington Ultra Mag that is shortened a bit. You could really say it's a much more efficient version of a 300 rum. It's not as fast, but it's a whole lot more efficient. And the case is very similar to this cartridge here, the 28 Nosler. Now, the 28 Nosler is a, just a tad bit longer of a cartridge and has a little bit more powder capacity. And of course, the 28 Nosler is by far Nosler's most successful, but as an all-around do-it cartridge that is also efficient, I'm going to have to say Nosler's best cartridge might just be the 30 Nosler. The 30 Nosler really excels from basically 180 grain up to 230 grain. A 180 grain bullet maxes out almost mid 3200 feet per second. So this is nipping on the heels of a 300 Weatherby. Let's look at the 200 grain. It is going high 3000 feet per second, 3080. And then what I think the premier bullet with the 30 Nosler is the 210 grain Acubond long range. And it's the bullet we're going to use to compare to other 30 caliber Magnums. It's getting topped out at a little over 3,000 feet per second, 3,015. Let's go ahead and look at the potential of the 30 Nosler with the 210 grain Acubond long range. That one has a pretty darn good BC of 0.661 and a top velocity of 3,015 feet per second. Your muzzle energy, just a little over 4,200 foot-pounds. It does have quite a bit of recoil at 32 foot-pounds. Out to conventional hunting distances, the bullet's going 2,462 feet per second, 2,827 foot-pounds at 400 yards with only 22, basically 22 and a half inches of drop. This is quite the performer. Let's just take it out to where the bullet will still expand pretty well and the energy is pretty high, out to 700. It's going almost 2,100 feet per second. Your energy is still above 2,000 foot-pounds and only 97 and a half inches of drop when you sight it in at 100. Pretty darn good. So how does the 30 Nosler stack up to the other 30 caliber Magnums? We're just going to look real quick. A 300 Winchester Short Magnum with a 210 grain Ankybon long range. Muzzle velocity of 2890. Your muzzle energy almost 3900 foot-pounds at 700 yards. The bullet's going 1989 feet per second, so about 100 feet per second slower. And 107.5 inches of drop, so that's a difference of about 10 inches and 1,844 foot-pounds. So the 30 Nosler almost has a 200 foot-pound advantage over the 300 WSM. However, the 300 WSM is quite a bit more efficient. Moving on, let's look at the 300 Winchester Magnum with a 210 grain Acubon long range, a muzzle velocity of 2,900 feet per second, your energy 39.22 at 700 yards, 
it's almost going 2,000 feet per second and a little bit less drop than a 300 WSM uh, with about the same energy. Again, the 300 WSM is almost a twin to the 300 Winchester Magnum. Now let's look at the 300 PRC performance. We are going to use a 212 grain ELDX. We're going to use a Hornady bullet for this one. And the data is from the Hornady book with a muzzle velocity of 2,950 feet per second. Your energy is almost 4,100 foot-pounds. The bullet's going 2,040 feet per second, 102 and a half inches of drop, and about 100 more foot-pounds than the 300 Winchester Magnum. Now the 30 Nosler, just a quick reminder, it's going 3,015 feet per second, 42, 39 foot-pounds. The bullet's going 2089 and you have 2,036 foot-pounds. Now lastly, we have the 300 Weatherby Magnum with a 210 grain Acubon long range. Muzzle velocity just a little bit more than the Nosler at 3,040, and the foot-pounds of energy is 4,300 foot-pounds. At 700 yards, the bullet's going 2,110 with 95.7 inches of drop and 2,075 foot-pounds. Now, I would say the 300 PRC 30 nozzle and 300 Weatherby are so close in performance that if you have a fast 300 PRC, it could outperform the 30 nozzle and 300 Weatherby. The same goes with the 30 nozzle. It could outperform a 300 Weatherby as well. They are so close. Now, the 30 nozzle is a darn good cartridge, but it is not a perfect cartridge. There is no perfect cartridge out there. There are strengths and weaknesses for each one. So the question is, why isn't the 30 Nosler more popular? Why doesn't it dominate sales? Why is the 28 Nosler beating it? Let's talk about it. In front of me are kind of the mainstays for 7mm Magnums. On the left is the 7mm Remington Mag. In the middle is the new 7PRC. And on the right is the 28 Nosler. So why does the 30 Nosler struggle while the 28 Nosler really excels? Well, I think the 28 Nosler is a real sweet spot. It is extremely fast, but not near as overbore as the bigger cartridges like the 7mm STW and the 7mm ROM. This is really on the edge of, well, you're getting the most you can out of a 26 inch barrel with a 28 Nosler. To really get the true potential out of a 7 STW and a 7mm ROM, I think you'd need a 28 inch barrel. They're just too overbore. Now, when you look at the 30 Nosler compared to the other 30 caliber Magnums, it has kind of the same issue the 300 PRC does. There's too many cooks in the kitchen, and there's a few darn good cooks as well. I just don't see the 30 Nosler ever being more popular than a 300 Winchester Magnum or 300 PRC. There's just not enough to set the 30 Nosler apart. The last issue I see with the 30 Nosler is its SAMI specs. For whatever reason, Nosler decided to make the 30 Nosler and all their other Nosler cartridges standard length SAMI spec. So the cartridge overall length is 3.340, just like a 30-06 or a 300 Winchester Magnum. So for whatever reason, they didn't try to do what PRC does is make the most of its case. Despite that, the 30 Nosler is still just a tad bit more powerful, but it could be a lot better if Nosler had properly made it into a Magnum length action. Last year I had the chance to do some load development and range time with a 30 Nosler, and I came away extremely impressed. In fact, this is the best group I've ever gotten with any rifle. It's beaten all of my rifles. It was a Remington 700 in 30 Nosler. With the 178 ELDX, I was able to get a quarter minute group. Yeah, it's an impressive cartridge.